What's going on, New Era Sens fans? This is Jacob and Jack, and we're here with another post-game coverage episode. Uh, this was February 2nd, and it was a 4-2 game at the end. Uh, we saw a beautiful goal by Tim Stutzel at the end of that. Um, yeah, definitely a lot of progression in this game as well. We're headed in the right track, but it still needs some production done. That was a... I don't... We, I, this feels like a win, because that was a... A positive finish to a just a tough Western road trip. It really was. And to see all the emotion that came out in that game, like you see Cedric Fouquet, who's been dealing with a lot of personal things uh, with his agent passing um, and kind of this scoring slump that he's been in and production slump, I guess. So it was good to see him get on the board tonight. I, I actually really liked his game. I thought he uh, – I found the last, let's say, two, three games, he's been a lot more physical – um, he's moving his feet more, and uh, he's been better overall on that fourth line. He hasn't been as much of a, a nuisance, I guess, as you could say, for some other vets out there. But, yeah, I, I really liked him so far. Yeah, and he played great um, on the penalty kill for the little bit that he was on there. I don't think he was on the penalty kill too much tonight. Um, but our penalty kill in general played great. It was great to see such a good uh, improvement from last game. Uh, yes. we, didn't, we didn't let in one power play goal this game. No, yeah, which is – Definitely a positive to take from the last game, um, given that that was the issue. Um, you know, take away the first period in this game, and that's as close to a perfect game as you're going to get from this team. And not that they played bad in the first, it's just they didn't, <laughs> didn't get the saves again. Yeah, so, exactly. And that's our biggest narrative. issue. I mean, Marcus Hogberg finishing the game with an 840 save percentage. Not it's just it. we need something to figure it out. He finishes with a nine twelve save percentage this game, and we win. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, obviously that one goal, that's on him. Um, yeah. That can't happen, but the other – so the first one that the Oilers got, um, that was – that's just a bad bounce that, you know, obviously Watson, you don't want his stick to be in the lane there if you want your whole body there, but that's just yeah. an unlucky bounce, and it's – Nothing you can do on that one, to be honest. Yeah, and I feel like I said that a couple times, and I feel like it's an ongoing excuse for our goalies. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of situations that that's true. Like, he had no chance there. That puck took a very weird bounce and went very like right to the other side of the net. The yeah. Hogberg was going. And I feel like I, f- I feel like that's probably the only one where all night, I guess, where it doesn't really the fault doesn't lie on anyone. Um, yeah. And it's kind of been that way the whole season. Like it's just. It's been the tail of this season. There's just no support. Or sorry, they're not getting the good bounces. Yeah, and so yeah, like that that first goal is just that bounce that we're not getting. It yeah, doesn't exactly. go over the net. It goes in the net. Um, and then what was you were gonna say something? I was just gonna bring up that second goal. Yeah, that's so you know the third one obviously really deflating for a team, but man, that second one, what a. I was really deflating for a fan. Oh, that was just brutal. So I, I, I did like Paquette tonight, but that starts with his turnover in the middle of the ice. Yeah, that's not good. Um, and I think DJ has been really preaching like the, you know the management of the puck. And so far this season, they've been great at it possession wise. I haven't looked at the stuff tonight, but I'm sure they were just as good uh, with the possession numbers and even strength tonight. Um, but that one right there, like it's a. Packet at the blue line turns it over instead of just getting it deep, you know. And then it, man, Coburn got absolutely worked. That was brutal. He did, and it, that's a very talented Edmonton team. Um, yeah. Almost everybody on that team, except for like maybe Cassie in that top six, maybe even top nine, yeah, can't do that to uh, Braden Coburn. Like no, I, I think Zach Cassian's the only one that can't do that to Braden Coburn on that team. Mm-hmm. They might not be a very well put together team, but they have a lot of talent. So I'm not – I'll get the I, – I also do want to add on that goal that after Paquette turned it over, he didn't skate back. And, like, I know I just yeah. said that he is playing a great game, uh, but he just didn't skate at all, and that rebound could have easily been his if he put any effort into getting back on that play. No, that's a really good point, yeah. Yeah, so – it that's, that's the kind of thing. It's just – if those are young players making those mistakes – by all means, right? But it's not. It's the two guys who won a Stanley Cup last season. You yep. know, not just any two veterans. They're Stanley Cup contending 
or winners, right? They've got rings. So that, and especially Paquette as a defensive forward, like, and not even a defensive forward. If you're the one who gives the puck away, you better be busting your ass to get back. Yeah, right? exactly. It's not enough to just be there. You got to pick up a guy and he didn't. So that, that was a tough goal. And then not even two minutes later, <laughs> Hogberg forgot where the net was. Yeah. That was you know, bad positioning. And it was terrible positioning. I'll give it him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Dry sidle. So I'm not a goalie, right? But yeah. as a goalie, you're staring at the puck. Like that's you're supposed to be puck watching, I believe. You're not looking at the eyes because you want to see the release. So dry sidle's coming in. But even if you're staring at the puck and then that far away, you can kind of still see where their head's at, right? Yeah. And the whole time I'm looking at him, he's like in a shooting position, but he's looking off, looking off. Yeah. And I'm like, he's going to shoot the puck, isn't he? And he did. He and the shot he made too, like went across the body pretty much and just fired it far side. Yep. It looks like an easy shot, but that is not an easy shot to take. So that's an elite goal by an elite player. Um, but man, like it would help if the goalie was actually in the net for it. That's the third goal this season, even on the road trip from that side of the ice. Two are on Murray, and then this one on um Hogberg that's just like for some, for some reason that side's a killer for the Sens I don't know why apparently and like everybody praises Connor McDavid for when he made Morgan Riley look foolish last year when he yep. was looking the other way Leon Dreisaitl just did the same thing to a goalie too yeah, yeah to a goalie and and it's yeah he didn't deke out of the way or anything but he made that shot and he he shot it exactly where he wanted to shoot it Yep. Yeah, he looked he looked surprised after he scored it, but yeah, regardless, that's what that's what he wanted to do. And you know, I will say, like, other than that goal, I'm not putting this game on Hogberg. So not the numbers all. numbers aren't in his favor, but that's not a terrible game for him in terms of like the other like I mean the other one's a tip that Good Branson didn't tie up his man, right? Yeah. Um and that's what more are you gonna ask for, right? Yeah. It's like I said, if he has over a 900 save percentage, we win this game. But I don't blame him for not having that 900 save percentage. Like, yeah. I don't blame him for the loss. No, um, but no obviously, enemies. his stats could be better. And it would be nice to get a save or two sometimes that we need it. But, yeah, yeah you just can't put all that blame on, on him for that game. No, definitely not. And uh, we'll just, I mean, we've got a couple of comments here about uh, the goalies. Do you want to? Yeah. yeah. So, so B Fudge is talking about how Hogberg did play a good game other than that bad goal he let in. Uh, you feel he's back to his old self, and, but you still want to see Decord play. I completely agree. I think Decord, maybe not the next game, but our next game back in Ottawa, maybe give him a chance. Um, and who knows if Hogberg starts the next game against Montreal and plays well, then maybe we run with Hogberg while he's hot if he plays good. Um, maybe we give Murray the chance if he has a good game, give him the chance in Ottawa. But if we lose this game, I think we give Decord a chance. I think they're going to go back to Murray, but I feel like once they get back to Ottawa, if it continues, then things are going to change. I don't know if you noticed, but in the intermission, Garriock, Bruce Garriock, he mentioned that um, Eric Branstrom might be up as soon as Montreal. Oh, really? I'm not sure how that would work because the what I'm under the assumption is, is that players who aren't on the taxi squad, so aren't with the team, if you call them up and you're on the road that they have to quarantine for seven days, Yeah. but if they're already in the city, like in Ottawa, which they are, all the Belleville players, yeah. they don't need to quarantine or anything. Yeah, I don't know that's, the rules on that. Yeah, so if that's the case, I don't know how he would get to Montreal unless he's already there, um, secretly, I guess, you know, but I don't know if it's a seven-day quarantine, if it's a, a two-day, because I know the 48-hour thing is a thing as well. Yeah, but I, I mean, hey, if they can get him up for that Montreal game, by all means, because yeah, do what you have to do. Take Coburn out of that lineup immediately. If I'm, uh, if I'm DJ Smith, yeah, and if I'm Eric Brandstrom, I'm waiting all season in my hotel room. I'm quarantining until I get the phone call. Yeah, and he. So people want to talk about, you know, uh, the young guys need. We need more young guys in the lineup. Yes, like obviously they do, but. The only one young guy that's possible to come up for D is Brandstrom. So you bring him in. The D are that's the defense. Like that's it for this season until you know the UND guys come in. Yeah. Um, because literally, like the UND defensemen are the rest of the prospect pool. 
literally. and I guess Lassie Thompson, but yeah, and he yeah he's kind of. I don't think there's any it. rush to bring him up, right? Yeah, um, um, he's not going to save anything. But the rest of the players are forwards, and I honestly, outside of Stepon, I wouldn't take anyone out of that forward group yet. I wouldn't either. And so, it's tough because, so I'm happy with Stepon on the fourth line. Not if he's getting power play one minutes. I don't understand that. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. We have uh, like Stutzel. He was playing incredible hockey today, just like Jeremok says here in the comments. Um, like Jimmy was flying, <laughs> needs to get stronger and physical. But like he played so good on that power play. Yeah, um, he, was... he was on that power play too. And even when it was five on five, he was just generating chances after chances. And he was just everywhere. He was. He was amazing tonight. He was dangerous, which is what you want, you know? And I think DJ needs to... So my ideal top power play unit, I want to see uh, Stutzel and Norris on the flanks there. Yep. Shabbat up top. And then Norris in the middle and Kachuk in front. The yeah. big problem here is I think DJ is really trying to do his best to get Dadnov out of this slump. Yeah, he is. You but can, I don't even know if he really would call tell. it a slump. Yeah, and, and he will get out of it, but maybe going on that second unit is what he needs, you know? Yeah, he need, he might need to run things. He hasn't had... So when he's he's in the middle on that power play, he hasn't had a huge like shot from there where you're like, oh my God, how'd that not go in? Like I feel like yeah. he's whiffed on every shot from there, and they tried him on the half wall, didn't work. So I don't know. The power play needs to fix, though, because especially tonight, they had more power plays than the Oilers, and they didn't convert. Like, that's... We saw last or last game that can be the difference in a game like this. So, yeah, exactly. And like looking at our power play, we generated a lot of pressure on our power plays tonight. Mm -hmm. We didn't get many chances, and like we only finished the game with I think eighteen shots final. Uh oh no, we we ended up at twenty five. But even like through most of the game, we were under twenty shots, under fifteen shots. Like we yeah. just weren't generating the the puck traffic that we needed to at the net mm -hmm. um like we had our guys that were getting in the right positions and making the right plays and everything we just weren't getting it on net yeah definitely i fully agree with that one um, and compared to the last couple games even though we didn't get them on net i do still see a lot of progress because i'd rather see us miss the net than just sit there and hold on to the puck like it, they're at least yeah. they're trying to hit the net now yeah i agree with that too and i i, I mean they're growing and so people were obviously mad that Stutzel's not getting that top power play time when a guy like Stepan is. Yeah. Um, but the way that Smith was throwing out Stutzel at the end of that game was just some. I love to see that. Yeah, um, he was just playing like all the minutes at the end of that game. It was great. Yeah. Um, I think now I feel, would be a good time to open this up. And yeah, perfect. So you see Brady Kachuk led the team in ice time. That's what I want to see. Yes. And Cedric Paquette down here with just under 10 minutes. Also what I want to see. He did great. Yeah, he was a minus two, which in 10 minutes you don't really want to see, especially with he, when he has the goal. No. But he wasn't terrible while he was on the ice. Yeah, no, I, I again, I thought he was good. Aside from that non-back check there on that uh, second goal, I, yeah. I liked the way he was throwing the body around. He, he looked like he was pissed after that first goal. <laughs> Yeah, and he had like some kind of he had like a chip on his shoulder. I bet, and you know, I was I was saying this to one of my friends. You know, like this is Cope, and I guess for Coburn too, but maybe he hasn't shown as much. But for Paquette, he came from being playing the same role on the best team in the league that just won the Stanley Cup. Right? Yeah, I'm not sure he, if he was in the lineup every night. Maybe he was a scratch. He actually was in the lineup every night. And was playing about three minutes more a game than he is in Ottawa. Well, there you go. So he's doing the exact same role on this team, and they've lost nine games in a row. Yeah. It's just reaching an all-time low. So I can see where his frustration is coming from. Um, yeah, this was – if you're DJ, like this is a positive game for them. Again, we feel like we keep saying that. Yeah. Um, the last three games I've been – really happy with honestly. everything after that seven to one loss where we brought Colin white back in. I just feel like yeah. especially our offense was just buzzing. Yeah. White was white. Uh, I mean, he wasn't as noticeable tonight, but uh, he was still pretty good. 
see, I disagree. I think he was very good tonight, um, making yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. plays. And when he went after um, Pugliarvi when <laughs> Dadnoff missed his hit, oh <laughs> my god, that was hilarious because like he yeah. has no idea what just happened. He just no. sees Dadnoff's down and they hit each other. Yeah, so. that wasn't that, were, that, were, that was like a harmless play from Pugliarvi, and he's probably like, what's what's going? It was kind of crazy that White didn't get a penalty, to be honest. I know, really months. though. Um, but yeah, that was per- worth mentioning because if it was a big hit by Pugliarvi, it's awesome to see that Colin White would just jump oh, in like sure. that. Especially white too, right? Not, yeah. not overly. He knows what he needs. We talked about this too. Like if he's playing where he feels like he's in danger of getting taken out of the lineup, that could be a good thing because he's been way better so far this year than he was last year. Yeah, you know. Um, one thing I do want to did want to talk about. Remember last game we had a lot of mention about Stutzel and how if he burns, if he plays this game, it's like his contract officially starts. I know. Man, Would like, you rather you imagine... be seeing him get on a plane right now or play that game? Oh, I, it, no, not a doubt in my mind, and I'd be shocked if there's a doubt in anyone else's mind that this kid belongs like right where he is. I wouldn't be surprised if he's playing the most ice time out of anyone by the end of the year. Yeah, you know? I just, agree. It's so good to see, and it'll it'll just continue to climb. And uh, yeah. I, it's it's fun to watch. It's one of those players where you're just like, he's going to do something special every time he's out there. That's three goals in seven games for him. The assists are going to start to come. So, <laughs> Well, it, they did come, and then they yeah. decided to give Tostin Watson. <laughs> yeah, I guess they mis- mis- mistook uh, 16 for 18, I guess. but Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tim Stutzel scored a beautiful goal coming down the wing, um, and it was it was a great pass from Derek Stefan, I will say. It was, yes. Um, even though I wasn't happy about him being on the ice with Stefan and Watson at the end of the game, <laughs> I, I was happy to see him on the ice at the end of the game, and it paid off. Like he showed how dynamic he can be in just th- the blink of an eye. He's in alone with that goalie, and maybe it's something about that rink in Edmonton because that's where they played the World Juniors. So. And he was top forward of the tournament, and he's got two goals in two games there. So yeah, you're right. Next trip they take to Edmonton, maybe we'll look for that as well. But yeah, absolutely. Another thing I wanted to mention on this stat page while we're here is that Cedric Paquette is the only player under fifty percent on the faceoff. Mm. And um, so I, I also mentioned this uh, with one of my friends who I was watching with Paquette, Watson, and Stepon are the were the fourth line for the majority of the night. It got a little jumbled. Yeah, but. There were, I counted three occasions in the first two periods where that line was thrown out there for a defensive zone faceoff against, and it's on the road. So obviously, Dave Tippett's going to throw out McDavid or Drysidle, right? They see the fourth line out there. Absolutely. That fourth line convert, like, also was a minus two, I believe. Two and three, yeah. Yeah. So. They were on for, I think, both of Pugliarvi's goals. They were, yeah. And you could just tell, like, when McDavid identifies who he can beat, he beats them. So there were a couple yeah. times where it's just it was questionable why you would throw them out there, especially if Paquette's struggling so much on the draws. Now, step on was 50-50. So yeah, they're both on that five. line. You can throw both in. But anyways, when you got a guy like Norris, who's 55%, and then... Paul at 50 and Kachuk's at 50 and uh, White with 62%. Like w- Tierney above 30 again. That's our guy yeah. right yeah. there. 60%, six and four. Perfect. Like, there you go. So, that's exactly what you want to see. That's four centermen. Or that's four people that can take draws. Right. So they've managed the puck better in that sense than the faceoffs tonight. Yep. Um, I'm just going to check Dreisaitl again because he, he was a monster. So he was only 50 50 again tonight. Uh, do you know? 16. Do you know how much time Thomas Chabot played tonight? Yeah, twenty-eight minutes. I was going to mention that too. That is ridiculous. And oh what's, my! What's and that's his first game back after an injury. Definitely wasn't one hundred percent tonight. You could tell. Yeah, he was a last-minute decision, right? Yeah, but he's a plus one. You can tell the difference when Chabot's on that blue line. They only like it was four, four, two. Yeah, you know, absolutely. That's, that's the least amount of goals they've let in. Oh boy. They haven't let in less than three in any games. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. But four goals is probably the least since the Jet series. Yeah. And That's I think. Good. 
I, I think our team goals against is like 467 right now. Yeah, it's brutal. It's like the next cl- I was looking today, the next closest is like three something. Oh, it's it's terrible. That is pretty bad. But I want to try and find team save percentage. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I don't want to look at it. It's just going to hurt. That's <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. So just a rough first, like not even a rough first period, a rough like second half of the first period that the, they, yeah. couldn't, they couldn't come back from. Yeah. And like, yeah, that first period, it wasn't even that bad of a period. It was, there was a lot of things that could have gone differently that would have been better, but yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a bad period whatsoever. Um, that dry settle goal actually ends up being the winner, which is just what Hogberg wants to hear, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, that's that's tough. It is. And it's one of those goals that, like we just said, you don't, you can't not let it in, but you can't blame him for it. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, if it, so, it, it's all about the narrative, right? Like in a nutshell, yeah. It's you can you can convince yourself that oh he, it was deceptive, all that. But when the goaltending's been as bad as it ha- as it has, that stings even more. Uh, yeah, I'm looking here at the leaders, goals against average for our team. Matt Murray with a 4.82 and a 8.50 save percentage. That's not gonna cut it. Not at all. That looks like the stats for a goalie after like a bad game, you know. Yeah. Not really not just though. not six seven games of played. <laughs> um, we got another comment from Jarmok here. I'm just happy to see no Artem Anisimov, but want more Galley. I was thinking that, so I'm like, huh? If Stepan comes out, it's probably Anisimov that goes in, but. If you're going to throw one of those guys on any of the power plays, why wouldn't you bring in Galchenyuk, who's a proven offensive player? And even on that first power play, if you throw Galchenyuk there, sure. Because you get... First of all, they have two righties on the flanks now on that first yeah. unit, and then they've got two lefties on the next one. And yeah, it works like Batherson feeding passes across and then Stutzel doing it on the other unit, but Stepan's not a sniper. He never really was in his career anyways. I don't know why they're Not putting Stepan on, on the flank. He can't move his feet. He just gets the puck and like turns and shoots it. Yeah, he just he he doesn't want it, it looks like on the power play. I will say I I did like the way he retrieved the puck, I guess, because that's a big part of the power play. It really um, is. He kind of played that back. Connor Brown role. Yeah. But yeah, and then we got a little greed there from John Muck as well. So there we yeah. go. Yeah. I think it's awesome to see the progression that we did make today, um, mm-hmm. especially with the defense. I didn't notice too many bad plays outside of the obvious ones that led to the goals. Mm-hmm. Like those were the worst ones. Um, Mike Riley looked good at times, looked bad at times, but didn't look noticeably terrible compared to the rest of the season. Well, so. that's so that's the interesting thing. He only played 15 minutes tonight. Yeah. So when Shabbat's back and <laughs> this is the first time I think all year where Shabbat's the only defenseman above 20 minutes. Yep. He's going to have to do that. That's that's just the way this team's going to have success is if he's playing 25 plus. Yeah, and, and it's the other sad. guys aren't. And that's what I said last time and yeah. I think you said it as well. He's got to stop saying oh well. Yeah. Like he has to stop saying my defensive partners are liabilities and whatnot. He has to do things himself. Like that goal that he scored. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, Mike Riley looked good, actually. Like, probably the best he's looked in a few games. Excuse yeah. me. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I've got for the whole game as a whole, other than, you know, we didn't really talk about the Sens goals, but Susan was yeah. the only one. Yes, like, Timmy scored his goal. That was beautiful, getting that beautiful. pass from Stefan coming down the wing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a great shot as well. And he missed another one too that just hit the shoulder of Goskin. And that, ooh. Oh, it, so close to having another one. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Paquette, who just picked up the rebound and it landed on his stick and he put it home. That was a nice play by Paquette. Nice quick hands. It was, it was, it was good decision making. It's a good fourth line goal, right? They're grinding and then they, they get a, that was a bounce that they got. I think it hit an Edmonton player in the back and yeah. they bounced right to him. So yeah. there's that, but a little, a little too late. 
Yeah, it's what you want to see. And like like I said earlier, you see Paquette kind of get out of that slump. He's kind of had a rough week, week and a half. Yeah. And he showed that. Like he slammed a stick down and just kind of didn't physically show the action of doing it, but threw the monkey off of his back. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, we'll see how he does for the rest of the next few games. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, do you want to move on to your three stars? Sure. Uh, so I'll go – I haven't really picked a third star. I'll go. I'll go with Paquette. Sure. Yeah. I like the. Uh, I like the way he, like, responded. I guess with that goal, and I've liked his legs the last couple of games. I've got no problem with him and Watson on that fourth line, as long as it's you know limited minutes, all that, and uh, which is it, it. It has been pretty much. Um, yeah. And I just. I, it was a nice goal. Quick skill. Um. My second star, I'll go with uh, Zub. I liked him. Wow. Zub. Yeah. I he he had better legs tonight than he did because he's you know got the rust off. Uh, yep. got, an, got an assist on Stutzel's goal too. Um, so that's that's points in two games for him, you know. Uh, and then I'll give a shout out to Zaitsev as well because he was he was quiet, didn't do much, had a couple nice pinches and four checks. That's exactly what you want from Nikita Zaitsev. Worth Perfect. noting, yeah. You know, uh, and then my first star, I'm gonna go with uh, Tim Stutzel. Yep, that kid just he's like he's almost like Brady Kachuk, but with just an insane amount of skill. Yeah, you know, like he's got that, he's just such a good skater and he just never stops playing. It was 4 1, and this guy's diving to block a shot and, and like oh, almost broke his foot. That was scary. right, almost breaks his foot, but then he doesn't get double shifted because obviously DJ loves that. Yep. He's going to throw him back out there, which is what a coach should do, and especially in a lost cause game like this, just reward him for that block. And he gets double shifted from there on out and scores a beautiful goal. Yep. On the celebration, too, the way he just, like, he, it wasn't a cockiness, but he's like, there's nothing to celebrate, right? We're still down two yeah. goals. We're going to lose our ninth straight. This, yeah. this kid is just the real deal, and I'm I am stoked to watch him play for the next little while. Like, I can't wait to see I him play. I am, too. And... I don't know if it's because I'm an Ottawa fan and I fell in love with them. I, I, I'm glad we have Stutzel over Lafreniere. Yeah, I mean... I, I don't mean, want anybody else. I haven't watched a ton of Lafreniere, to be to be fair, but um, I was. it would have been nice to have him just based on like that French-Canadian thing. It would have been yeah. great for the market, whatever. But, man, did we luck out with, with the third overall pick there. That's... Uh, can be thanking the Eric Carlson trade for a long, long time. I think. Yeah. Oh boy. And especially with Josh Norris, like he's, yeah. I think he's second on the team in points. If Norris starts racking up a few more points, like he's in the Calder discussion. Which oh, is he's a hundred percent worth of the Calder discussion. Yeah, you keep. It's easy to forget about that. Um, yeah. He had a quiet. He didn't play much tonight. He had fourteen minutes. So. I don't yeah, know. he he looked okay. Uh, I found I didn't find he was on the power play too much. I, I, that just might be me mm -hmm. not noticing him. Yeah. Um, but I feel like he was on the power play a lot less tonight, and I don't have those numbers here, but I don't know, just kind of a personal thought. Yeah, no, he, he was definitely a quieter night for him, but remember the last time he had a quiet game, the next game it was like probably his best game of the year. So Yeah, really though. We'll see him against Mont Mon yeah, we'll see him against Montreal. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, my three stars. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Dadanov for my third star, not because he played a great game or anything, but he's made so much progress this game, like mm -hmm. just the way he's positioning himself, the way he's skating, and just his thoughts, like what he, what's he gonna do next with the puck? I don't know. Yeah. He just looked a lot better this game, more confident, and I feel like he's ready to break through and start putting up the points with our team. Yeah, he's um, very creative for sure. Yeah, definitely, and he has the potential to just be. It's like skyrocket. Yeah, just to get a streak going for sure. Yeah. Um, my second start of the night, I'm going to go Nick Paul. Uh, Nick Paul, oh, yeah. he was everywhere tonight. And like skating into our end, pushing the offensive zone. He was just like, I think he was tied for first with three shots tonight. He looked very frustrated on the bench at the end of the game when he, he had a good chance there. Yeah. And it was, you like seeing that out of the guys on the team just because we haven't seen a lot of emotion in the last couple of years and seeing him want something so bad. It's mm -hmm. just, it feels good to see. And I want to see more of that on this team from everybody. Agreed. Um, and then first star without a doubt is going to be Brady Kachuk. 
Uh, he had, what is it here? He had six hits, three shots, and like he's just a monster. Machine. He was everywhere tonight. He put up uh, an assist. And, like I'm just baffled every time that I watch him step onto the ice because mm-hmm. he'll either run right through you, do one of the nicest takeaways you're gonna see all season, or just like no matter what, he's gonna end up with the puck when he wants it. He uh just he's just he's an engine. He's just a motor that drives this team right now. And yep. so I I know they're both left wingers technically, but I guess the plan is to eventually move Stutzel over to center. I hope when so. that happens, those two need to play together all the time because, yep. man, they're, I think out of all the forwards, they're the only two who haven't touched the ice together yet. I swear they haven't. I don't know? think so either, unless it was like just while well, one's changing and the other one's just getting on. And, I don't oh, like they haven't started the line together. It is like I'm, I'm like almost salivating just thinking about how great that combination would be. Like just imagine even on the power play, like Kachuk posted up in front and Stutzel just feeds him. You know, it's just automatic, I think. Yeah. Um, it was good to see Brady play with Norris and Batherson again. It's been a mm-hmm. few games since we've seen that um, kind of steadily, but yep. we saw a lot of it tonight after the first period, and they looked good together like they did all season. They had Stutzel in that spot for a couple shifts, I think I noticed. I they don't know what happened. That was, that's what I've been asking for for the last three or four games. Because Kachuk can run his own line. And because you, Kachuk can run, can run his own line, yep. I, I I honestly I just I hope that D, like you know they've been pretty like knock on wood but they've been pretty lucky with the injuries up front on that top nine so far yeah but if that stays intact you can mess around with those top nine forwards as much as you want you know like you could have yeah. Nick Paul on the top line no one would be complaining or like even Chris Tierney you could argue yeah. like if he's yeah. playing with Kachuk and Batherson on the other side like that's gonna be a sure. good line so that's. That seems to be set right now, even though they're not winning and stuff. But yeah. um, which you can't put any blame on the offense. No, no, and it's tough. Well, maybe tonight they didn't have a ton go. Like twenty five yeah. shots is like the least they've had in a game in actually a while, which is kind of and crazy. a lot of shots came in the last seven minutes. Yeah, they had fifteen, I think, going into the third period, which is yeah. ideal. You're not going to win like that. So, um, that's. I mean, that's kind of a like. I guess we could do the the who needs to be better. Yeah. So. Who's gonna be better for tomorrow or Thursday? Yeah, yeah. Thursday. Um, for for me, it's I don't know. I'm gonna Tough. say Matt Murray, just yeah. because I think Matt Murray didn't play tonight, but he's just got to be better. He's going through a lot. Um, social media has been talking a lot about Matt Murray. Mm-hmm. Um, some of it positive, some of it not so much. And but it's it, it's a known fact that Matt Murray's not playing the best hockey of his career. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to see him get back to that. Uh, I don't think by any means that I re- I would regret this signing yet. Um, I think it's so it's early. A slow start, but no thoughts have crossed my mind about oh, no. like I haven't been scared about this at all. I I'm not scared because well it's it's the people are saying oh people are saying oh well you know like he was there were signs that he was this bad. It's like the, he hasn't just been bad. He's been like comically bad, right? He's not that kind of goalie. No goalie is. Yeah, you, know? no. you don't get yeah, to where you were at this point. Jumps. Yeah, exactly. And that pain, people are again. They say, "Oh, that's because the blue line is so bad." And but the Penguins' blue line wasn't much better. Like he's not unaccustomed to this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, what I will say, so for my need, who needs to be better, I got Good Branson. Yeah, he was a bit of a liability tonight. Just I didn't agree. tie his man up in front. He's just. Tough with the puck, and he played 17 minutes, so not a ton, you know. But he he definitely needs to be better. Uh, you could I could say Coburn too, but I have I'm a little skeptical that he's even going to be in the lineup. Yeah, and that's the thing with Coburn. Yeah, he has to be better. I don't expect better out of Mons. No, and even at the beginning of the game, I was like, I was even thinking about tweeting it out. I was like, you know, Coburn actually has some nice legs tonight. He looks good. <laughs> and then he goes minus three, and yeah. that's in, like, one period. So not great. Um, the one thing, though, Montreal looks like a wagon right now. Oh, yeah, I am like, not excited to play them. No, me either. And Tyler Toffoli, I mean, I know we're not Vancouver or anything, oh, but Tyler Toffoli is just lighting up. He, that's his nine goals this year. I, I watched a little bit of their game last night against Vancouver. Yeah. 
they have four lines that just go. And the biggest difference, so I was looking at their forwards and I'm like, you know what? I don't see an awful lot of a difference between their forwards and Ottawa's forwards. The biggest difference is the blue line and then obviously Carey Price. So yeah, the, the Habs top four is something like Ben Sherratt, Shea Weber, uh, and then Edmondson and Petrie. Yeah. I don't know what that, if those are the pairings. I might be messing that up a bit, but those are the top four for sure. And Romanov. And they're, yeah, and I think they're rotating Romanov, Mete, and someone else on the back yeah. end. So it, like that's a stellar decor. Like those top four are massive. They can all move the puck. They can all skate. Yeah. Um, I got them coming out of the division at this point, but I don't know. Like, so th- regardless, it's going to be a tough couple games, and I don't think I can easily see this stretching to eleven games. But you know, we'll see. Yeah, it'll be it'll be tough to break this streak now because mm-hmm. the confidence is so low. The morale in that locker room is probably just rock bottom right now. Yep, and they're going into a team that's first in the league as of tonight. I think someone on it was an Edmonton reporter. Uh, he tweeted about Stutzel blocking that shot. Yeah, and he said like the Sens bench is like just so lively and like they're like they're all in good spirits after that block, which is like that's. Seems like such a small victory, but man, that goes a long way. It goes a like, long, did, long way. Did you see when he limped onto the bench? Like all the guys like yeah. grabbed him from behind, like pulled him onto the bench and patted him on the back, and, and it was just so wholesome. Yeah, and I, I like, I've stopped playing, and I stopped playing about like a year and a half ago, and yeah. I just remember that, like, when someone blocks a shot, especially a kid, like a young player, it's just it fires everyone up. Yeah, it's just like so electrifying, and when you're that caliber of a player, that that's exactly. not your job. Nobody expects you to get in front of that puck. He blocks that shot, and then he goes out and scores a beautiful goal, like a yeah. couple minutes later. So, it's something to build on, and we'll see where that takes them. It's the last game of a long road trip. This is probably, Fair. I don't know what. The, I guess it's ten game road trip, right? Yep. No, I don't know. Seven, I, don't know what it is. I think I don't know. Seven game road trip, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I lost I track. Know. Something like that. Yeah. So been a while since we've been home. Yes. It'll be I'm still looking forward to doing one of these after a win. Yeah, me too. Like that that should be fun if the day ever comes. I mean imagine, I'm if, it, <laughs> imagine if it doesn't. <laughs> one fifty four and one. <laughs> Won't even get another overtime loss to get excited about. Yeah, they had a lot of those last year and they're almost non existent right now, which is a little sucks a little bit too. I know. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see everybody on Thursday night. Thank you all for joining us. This is Jacob and Jack with Post Game Cup.